Uh, very important is the fundraising for situation conservation ideas, advice, and opportunities.
So uh, there's a number of different types of donors out there, so I'll just go briefly over um, a lot of them. So individuals tend to be the largest pot of money out there. They can really help sustain your organization. My advice with this group is try to focus in on monthly donors. Um, you'll find that you raise a lot more money from a monthly donor than from someone you know, giving five or ten dollars a month, and you will like 50 or 100 yearly. They're more likely to stick with you and to provide that support. Um, you should also make sure that uh, whatever donation processing you use allows the donor to cover the credit card fees. That can save you a lot of money. Um, and if you use like PayPal or Stripe or anything, they have nonprofit rates. Make sure you're getting that. It's cheaper to process the donations. And I can I can give you that info later if uh, if, if you need that. Um, foundations um, tend to give like bigger chunks of money. They can be really tough to get in the door with. They get way more proposals than they um, can fund. Um, but if you can get in the door, they can sustain your work for years. And that was how we got started was with grant funding, mostly because of Jay Nicholson and uh, his reputation in the, in the uh, fundraising community. Uh, corporate sponsors, so this is the area that Sea Turtles, my organization Sea Turtles has had the most success with. And uh, the way that I approach corporate fundraising is I try to think like a marketer. Um, I, you know, what can we offer a, a company um, in terms of promotion and everything? Because even, you know, not every company is Patagonia and just wants to only do good. You know, there, there's a profit motive with it. Um, but, um, yeah, the more that you can think, like, their marketing team, the more likely they're going to want to um, work with you. Cause marketing is an offshoot of corporate fundraising. If you don't, even if you don't know this term, you've seen it. It's uh, buy a bottle of rum, save a sea turtle. Buy a soda stream, save a sea turtle. Buy some dish soap, save a sea turtle. Um, this is an area that I think is really growing. Companies are really wanting to show how um, they give back. Uh, and if you're interested in that rum, come to the live auction. There's going to be a couple of bottles of those there. Um, <laughs> Tourism businesses, um, hotels, tour operators, restaurants from around you um, can be really great supporters of your work. Um, although I think the pandemic maybe exposed maybe a little bit of an overdependence in our community on tourism, um, but it is an area where um, you know I really think there's there's a lot of um, potential. Oh, I, I forgot to say. Um, all of the photos in this presentation are either from the Sea Turtle Conservancy Project in Zorota or the University of Michoacan Project in Colola, Mexico. Two of my favorite places in the world to go visit them. They're amazing. And if there's no credit, it's, it's my photo. <laughs> Except for that one. <laughs> I did cut my hair for this presentation. <laughs> Uh, government agencies can be huge pots of money. You guys are familiar with a lot of them. Fish and Wildlife, Global Environment Facility, um, tend to be some of the most complicated um, application processes. The people reviewing your proposals there are going to be the most experts of anyone of any of these things. So you really have, have to have your project really, like, really well done, really organized, um, or it's going to be very difficult to get um, this type of funding. So uh, a few areas that I think um, are really um, important to think about and pay attention to. Um, gamification. Um, I, I might have made that word up, um, but what it is is basically turning everything into a game. And I'm sure you've seen examples of this. You know, when you're on an app and you reach level 30 and they're going to save a baby turtle in your name or clean a pound uh, of plastic. Um, this is an area that I think is really becoming um, huge. So Dotsico is one of our sponsors who does this kind of thing. They work with apps and businesses um, to do what they call micro-incentives. Um, and I think that we've really just reached the tip of the iceberg. Now, of course, there are some issues with doing things that encourage people to stay on their phone longer, um, to have some mixed feelings about. Um, but I do think there is tremendous potential for uh, conservation funding. Yeah. Cryptocurrency and Web3. If you had asked me this a year ago, I would have said this is the biggest potential new source of funding that I've seen in, in more than 20 years. 
The situation has changed a lot in the crypto world, but I do believe over the long term it, there is a ton of potential there for conservation. And this world is especially interested in the ocean plastic issue. Um, now, some of the feedback we get sometimes is, oh, Bitcoin is terrible for the climate. Yes, Bitcoin is terrible for the climate. Um, but a lot of people equate Bitcoin with all cryptocurrency. There's definitely a lot of shadiness and weirdness in this world. I just started to scratch the surface. Thanks so much, Andrew DiMatteo. Um, but um, this is the biggest reason for our growth in the last year. Um, next door is a metaverse um, that we work with. Um, so going back to Bitcoin, Bitcoin is one cryptocurrency. There are a lot of different types of cryptocurrency that have a much tinier carbon footprint. The second biggest one, Ethereum, 99% less energy. So I'm not a crypto booster by any means, um, but I do think there is a lot of potential here, especially if you can focus in on the projects that are using renewable energy and, and things like that. So donate now, pay later is a new thing that I recently learned about. So you've probably seen like online shopping where it's like buy now, pay later, where you purchase a product and then pay it off over a couple of months. Well, there's an organization now doing that for donations where you get the donation right away and then they charge the, um, the person for it. We've experimented with it a little bit, haven't had a lot of success with it yet, but this is the way that younger generations are purchasing things online and I think it's an important thing to keep an eye on. Um, so moving on to uh, some general advice. The biggest advice that I can give to oh my gosh. the biggest advice that I can have for anyone trying to raise funds in this world is focusing in on your story. Get it down to one paragraph. Humans respond to stories. We've been communicating with stories since language was created, and so. Um, you know, stories have a structure. You know, there's a conflict, there's a problem, there's efforts to resolve that problem, there's the resolution. You want to have one really tight paragraph and use it everywhere. And so I'm going to get my email out at the end of it. If you want to put one together, if you want some feedback on it, send it to me. I'll be happy to, to give you some feedback on, on, your, um, on your story. And, but I also mean by this visual stuff. Invest in good photography. Invest in videography. There's a lot of photographers out there getting their start. I could use some help. Promotion for you guys. Um, it's been absolutely critical for our fundraising, especially with some of the corporate um, donors. Have really great photos and video. Simple, concrete, and emotional. Mr. Trashfield is one of the best followers on social media. <laughs> Any of you guys that ever had the Baltimore Symposium, this is the Baltimore Harbor, and Mr. Trashfield with his giant googly eyes um, goes around the harbor cleaning stuff up. And this is one of the most effective fundraising messages I think I've ever seen. 20 bucks cleans up 170,000 cigarette butts. So you want your, especially on social media, you want your posts, they gotta be short, they gotta be to the point, and they gotta grab attention. I mean, just the, the single silly thing of putting the, the googly eyes on it makes just a giant difference. It really turns the whole thing from something like a little depressing into something silly and fun. So uh, a case study of this is our uh, Billion Baby Turtles program. Um, we're supporting more than 50 beaches around the world. We're about to cross a million dollars donated and 10 million hatching saved. Um, we don't shy away from saying baby turtle. We don't use hatchling all that often. Um, because that's what attracts attention. There's nothing in our world that, that creates more emotion than a baby turtle. And so what we figured out was um, across these projects, we ask every project, what's your budget and what's your average number of hatchings produced? We come up with a cost per hatching saved. We average that out among the 50 different projects that we support and it comes out to about 10 hatchings for every dollar. Now if you have a project, you're like, oh my God, we're way higher than that. Um, it's mostly Carlos Delgado and the University of uh, Michoacan and Colola, whose price per hatchling saved is like less than a penny. Um, but you know, it's a really powerful message. So if a shirt, you know, t-shirt company gives us a dollar per shirt, they can say, all right, help can save ten hatchlings, and that's going to these projects around the world. Uh, develop personal relationships. 
humans are humans. You know, we're not just machines on the other end of that email or phone. And so the more of a relationship you can develop with your donors, the more successful you're gonna be, the more they're gonna come back and uh, give you money year after year. So invest in building that relationship with whoever is giving you money. Keep in touch, so that's kind of an offshoot of, of developing that relationship, it's an important part to it. Um, but I also want to say here, collect the information of everybody that you can. If you have travelers and volunteers coming to your beaches, get everyone's email address. Email fundraising continues to be much, much more effective than social media. The more of an email list that you have, um, the more of that base that you have, the more funds you're going to be able to raise from it. And it can also be a benefit that you offer for uh, corporate sponsorship. Um, start close to home. So if you're just getting started in this world, you got to get over the, the fear of asking for money. Um, friends and family is, is where you start. They're the ones that know you, they want to support you, and they will. it will make them feel good to support you. So it can be very tough. This is how um, I got started here with some, with some friends and family giving a couple of uh, initial donations. Um, so it can make all the difference in the world. Be confident and uh, persistent. Um, you know, confidence is contagious. Um, you know, you all do great work. All of you, every single person uh, in this room. And uh, the more that you can project that, even if you don't really feel it down deep in your heart, um, the more that's going to reflect in your uh, fundraising. Quick little fun story with this. This is another one of our sponsors, um, the biggest uh, organic cereal company in the United States. I first got funding from them about 15 years ago. My first meeting with them was like, how about a turtle-themed cereal? And they're like, yeah, hey, okay. A few years later, um, I went back and I met with them, and this time I brought Jay Nichols with me. And we're like, hey, what about that turtle cereal thing? And the, the, this is, I'm not getting this is the response. Well, you know, we like to focus on the cute animals, you know, the ones with fur. <laughs> That's what they said, yeah. And I was a little like, oh. yeah. Jay, without missing a beat, launches into a scientific explanation of cuteness and the ratio of the size of the eyes to the size of the head and how some turtle hatchlings are perfect for that. And the person just sat there like, Oh, like you can see the, the, the wheels turning. Um, several years later, checked in with them again. Hey, what about that thing? And eventually a few years later, they came back, like, all right, we're ready. We want to make the turtle-themed cereal. And uh, this is now you know, one of our biggest sponsors. We're on the box. That's another benefit of corporate sponsorship is they can help you reach a much bigger uh, audience. Some advice we can take from a turtle, grow a thick shell. Being a fundraiser means getting told no a lot, a lot. You cannot take it personally. Most funders are getting way more proposals than they can fund, and it's not a reflection on your work. There might have just been a better fit. Um, you know, who knows what the reason is, but it's not, you know, it's not an indication that your work is not useful. So you gotta let it roll um, off the, the back of your shell. Um, so to speak, and I mean, I, you know, we've had to decline some some requests for proposals, and um, you know, I've had people like get upset, get angry, be really surprised. I just tell you from the funder side, you know, if you, if that's your reaction, you're not likely to get funded again in the future. So you know, you can have emotions about it. That's okay. I certainly have, um, but definitely keep it. A uh, quick case study with that, um, our Seashell app and our Too Rare to Wear program. Oh, just a quick plug. Um, by the registration desk, if you didn't see them, there are maps of Cartagena of the Turtle Friendly Shops. This program that we've been working with from Dustin from Tugas Del Mar, shops that have agreed not to sell tortoise shell here. So I'll be talking more about that in the next session, so you're going to get real tired of me. Um, but this program, you know, we had the idea in 2016. And I was really excited about it. I knew it could be a really effective program. This is a partial list of the funders that I reached out to. Notes from every single one of them. It took two years to find the funder that uh, was the fit for this program. And we're now you know, really proud of this program. So just keep that in mind if you get a no. Find your niche and look around. 
We all do work with turtles. Um, what do you do differently? What is your population especially important locally, nationally, um, internationally? Do you take a different approach? Do you work really strongly with communities? Are you community-led? Um, those kinds of things can help you differentiate yourself. <laughs> to the donors out there, be transparent. It's, it's not easy being up here for a while. Uh, be transparent. The more transparent that you can be with your donors, the more they're going to keep giving you money. So overshare information. Tell them where your money is going. Tell them what it's doing. Tell them what effect it's having. Overshare uh, as much as possible. I can't stress that enough. This is becoming more and more important for donors um, across all the different areas um, that I talked about. Um, invest in building your audience. So when we started Sea Turtles, we had some initial funding and we, we really worked on building up our social media presence. And that has really made a huge uh, impact um, over the years. A few, I'm not gonna go over each of these, maybe you can take a, take a photo, um, but our fantastic communications person, uh, Bethany, um, who's here, um, gave some advice on social media. Um, social media fundraising is really challenging, that algorithm, those algorithms, ugh, awful. Um, one I can say is invest in search engine optimization. Google it if you don't know what it is. You know, we did just a little bit, it's not that hard, and now we have really strong web traffic because of it, and that really helps us as well. Um, yeah, videos, reels, um, you know, check out, TikTok, if you want to reach you know, younger audiences, at least before it gets banned. <laughs> a lot of you guys walk up and down the beaches looking for turtles. Don't just do that on the beach. I was uh, in a, a supermarket in Portland, Oregon, where I live, and I came across this one. I was like, ooh, they're from Oregon, I'm from Oregon. I like turtles, they like turtles. So I sent them a quick message on their um, contact page. Got a $500 donation a couple days later took a second, so always be looking out for those symbols and everything. Um, and also that's where I found an Nature Species Chocolate, that's where I found Nature's Bath, it was in the supermarket. Really underrated place to do your prospect research. <laughs> I'm gonna spare you the joke about the fun and fundraising, um, but the more fun that you can have, the more joyful you can be, the more optimistic you can be, the more effective you're gonna be. And I think that was one of the big lessons from the pandemic. If you remember, everybody was sad and isolated. We couldn't deal with any more bad news. So positive stories really resonate. And so I would encourage you to you know, be silly and um, you know, be fun and be positive, because I think it'll make a difference in your fundraising. Don't just focus on the bad news, there's a lot of it, and we've heard it all. Follow the rules, it should go without saying, get your reports in on time, you know, follow the direction of the proposals. Funders are looking for reasons to decline your proposal, and so if you, if you get something wrong, if you don't send them in a report, it's the best way to never get funding from them uh, again. Hmm. So, stay true to your principles. We as an organization decided not to take money from the uh, fossil fuel industry, from <coughs> plastics, from fisheries. Whatever your organization decides, decide. I'm not saying that everyone needs to do that. Figure out what you want to do and what funds you will take and, and make sure you try to uh, stay true to that. There we go. Fraud. Every few months, I Google our name because I've been seeing this happen quite a bit. This is not a company that supported us. They had our logo, they had our website. It took a long time to get this taken down and it's happening. Um, I know Sea Turtle Conservancy has had a lot of issues with this as well, so be careful with this. Trademark your name, too, and your logo if you can. That also helps. So real quick to go over a few of our funding opportunities. Like I said, I want to give you money. <laughs> uh, Billion Baby Turtles, so we support turtle nesting beaches in uh, developing countries, um, ones that are as community-centered uh, as possible. Um, our, I'll be honest, our funding right now is pretty much spoken for, but we're doing a lot more fundraising, hoping to bring it in. So, um, Adriana's here. Um, there's her uh, email. Sorry, Adriana. 
<laughs> QR code to the to the application page. Um, our Sea Turtles of Plastic program we started a couple of years ago, inspired by uh, Daniel Gonzalez Paredes of Garden Bay. Um, we want to support projects that. Um, not just clean up the plastic on your beaches, but do something with it. Invest in the infrastructure to recycle it locally, turn it into products that can support conservation, make your funding streams more diverse, and support your uh, community. So this is a newer program, but we're really trying to grow it uh, quite a bit. We're gonna be opening it up again soon. Sea Turtle Week, raise your hand if you participated in Sea Turtle Week. All right, next year I wanna see way more hands raised. <laughs> Um, we're hoping to, we're hoping to um, get to 200 groups um, participating. You can sign up here, you can sign up at our table, find Bethany, she's the, the whiz behind it. It's gonna be really fun this year. We're giving money in a variety of ways. There's a photography contest happening now. Um, we're gonna be doing up to $500 grants for cleanups during Sea Turtle Week. Um, and uh, yeah, we're gonna do a Sea Turtle Scientist of the Year contest later in the year. So keep your eyes peeled for that. And sorry, Bethany, here's your, here's your email address. Our Sea Turtle Inclusivity Fund is something I'm, I'm really proud of. Um, we're trying to invest in uh, building leaders in the communities where the sea turtles are. This is Caitlin, she's one of the first, uh, she is the first recipient of it, so glad that she's here. Three other uh, members of the Inclusivity Fund are here as well. And so we're really trying to grow this program. We've given out eight scholarships now um, for this program. It's another one I'm really excited about, the Hatchery Incubator Program. Again, it's not a hatchery or incubator <laughs> program. It's more like a tech incubator where we want to help get new, fun, innovative ideas off the ground. It's not just going to be money. It's going to be a lot of training and fundraising, media outreach, social media, all that kind of stuff. So we've moved the, the deadline for the application to the 17th, so get that in. Um, take a quick picture of this. Um, there's a lot of other funders out there. You're familiar with uh, a lot of these names. I love the Fish and Wildlife uh, link up there because they are redoing their website. You can Google it. Anne Marie's here. Find her. Um, they give a ton of great funds um, for conservation work. I, I put the asterisk with PacSafe. I've had a lot of issues with them. Um, I would just be careful with, with that potential funder, but they do support turtle work. Um, and you know, i got to get some of that Amazon money. <laughs> this is the bottom ones there, Jeff Bezos. And again, stay true to your principles. If you don't want Amazon money, don't ask for it. But Mackenzie Scott, she's a, an absolute hero. She's his ex-wife. <laughs> now she's giving all of his money away. <laughs> and she's outpacing him, which is awesome. And uh, so she started a website recently, and from what I'm hearing, she's going to be opening that up. And both of them support uh, nature conservation stuff, so I'm hoping, hoping we can get some of that. Last slide. Um, a few quick resources here um, for anyone out there doing fundraising. Nonprofit Tech for Good is a great resource for um, online fundraising, social media marketing. Uh, GuideStar has a lot of information about um, potential funders. Global Giving is a uh, crowdfunding platform. I know there's a bunch of groups that have a lot of success on that platform here um, in this room. Uh, Google Grants, your organization might be eligible for up to $10,000 a month in free Google Ads. That's been really huge uh, for us, so try to take advantage of that. Um, TerraViva is a grant database, I think primarily focused on uh, Latin America. Um, so that's a good source of uh, info for funders. And 1% for the Planet is a uh, network of businesses that give 1% of their revenues to environmental causes. And to get that money, you have to be a nonprofit member. So definitely um, check that out. Um, so again, this was an absolute um, giant honor. Um, my, uh, I've been doing this since 1999. Um, my daughter, she's 21 now, conceived on a turtle nesting beach working for DU. Um, it's been a real pleasure talking to you guys and sharing some of my experience, and so again, it's so great to see all you guys. So, there's my email, get in touch with any questions, and yeah, follow on social media, especially. Thank you.